My name is Thomas, and I want to introduce and talk about the co-writer extension for Type 3, and I also want to talk about models in general, how, how they help us, what can we do with us, uh, a bit about OpenAI, and yeah, let's start. I think every one of you remember about the hype about JetGPT at the end of 22. They launched her, her great uh, GBT large language model, and they also launched ChatGBT. ChatGBT was a great tool. It had a big hype around. We can all, we could all create texts in just so, so, uh, some seconds about every topic we want to talk about. And some some months later. We thought it would be cool to bring this also to Type 3. In general, ChatGPT is just a commercial, a demonstration on how great and how big their large language models are. And we think, okay, this would be very cool to have in the back end of Type 3. So we yeah, just put out an extension who bring their API to the back end of uh, Type 3. I also talked about that, and you may use, does, does anyone of you use uh, the co-writer extension already? So, no? So, it's good. I have a little demonstration here. So, you have your CK editor in the Type 3 backend. You, you can just click on the extension button, and it will, then you can put in your prompt. Uh, you don't have to use a real prompt. You can just say, write about the world, or plans, or type of free, or whatever, and it will generate the text for you. As, as you would do if you have to write your text at, and, uh, on your own. Yeah, and then, for somehow like a year, it was very quiet around the co-writer. The co Many people say, please bring it to type of free uh, version 12, but as you know, the CK at it all changed a lot between uh, 11 and 12, and so we had a lot of stuff to do to bring it to the 12, but we did it. And one of the uh, one of the most uh, most important changes we bring to the uh, co-writer was we gave you the ability to change the endpoint of the model. Uh, uh, until Type 3 version 11 and the co-writer version 1, you have to use OpenAI. And now you can just take your own model if you have one. Yeah, but it's still on pre-release, so it's not stable at the moment and not production ready. Why is it that? Uh, at the moment, we have to allow uh, unsafe inline JavaScript to bring the credentials of your model to the backend. And this cool button, this dialogue for the CK editor, there isn't a, at the moment in Type 312. So, we had some, we had to put in some rock arounds at the moment, but it works. And yeah, the, the most important features of the new co-writer co version 2, I already mentioned it. It's support for the type of free version 12, version 13 also, and we don't need OpenAI anymore. <laughs> But, but you can still use OpenAI. OpenAI had many great tools. It had this big GBT models. Uh, they are amazing in generating text. They are also amazing in evaluating texts. They have, they have this Dolly model. It's very great in generation uh, image. And they have, and the API of OpenAI has the Whisper model. It's, uh, well, its main idea is bring speech to text. But there are many people who use it or use it in a professional way are struggling a bit with, with using the OpenAI AP because there are still some unclear copyright rights who own the texts which are generated by OpenAI. Do you own it? Does your customer own it? Does OpenAI own it? Uh, OpenAI is also a bit known in changing APs without uh, no time, they change it from one day to the other one. And you or your customers 
you lose a bit your data serenity. So especially if you start to train your models, you give them a, a, a much stuff of internal knowledge of your company. You maybe, if you want to uh, write, uh, you maybe give them knowledge about your customers, personal data of your customers, and you don't want to give that to a company and, and you don't have, uh, know about what a company will do with it. So it would be much cooler to, to use the co-writer and to use your own model in, on the other side. And you don't have to use the open AI RP anymore. We tried a bit, we played around with some open source tool, we put some open source tool together, and we are, we are in a good way to complete, uh, com completely go away from open AI. At the moment, we can put up our, our own model, we can set it on every environment we want, uh, as, as soon as the perform performance of the environment fits. And yes, we have the co-writer as an application to use it. At the moment, it's not yet tra trainable. We are working on it, and it maybe took some days or weeks until we can train the model too. How did we do it? Yeah, I also said we needed some OpenAI tools. Uh, let us use this test stack from left to right. At the moment, we, we host it on AWS and EC2 G5 cluster because we need uh, the, the GPUs just to get a performance like OpenAI has it. Uh, our models, we play with two different models. The first one is uh, the Llama model, it's an open, uh, open source model from Facebook. And the next one is the model from Mistral AI. Uh, yeah, it's from the French company Mistral. It's a bit better than Llama and currently we reuse it. We played with a lot of runtime environments, like the Llama CPP, it's a runtime environment for yeah, models. You can use both Llama and Mistral. Uh, virtual LM and a lot of a lot of more. We tried all of them. Virtual LM is at the moment uh, the best we have, but the others work more or less good too. We use Nvidia's CUDA. Uh, CUDA is an API, a very close to hardware API. It allows you to uh, bring some calculations using your a CPU does to the graphic to your GPU is it's way faster. And all this stuff is glued together with some Python script. The world tool still uses the open AI, so it's okay for us to change between our model and open AI because every application we write can use the open uh, the open AI API and talk to our model or talk to our uh, talk to OpenAI, it doesn't matter for us, and we can put our model to every uh, application that uses the OpenAI at the moment. And yes, our co-writer, co our application itself, is a uh, plugin for the CK editor in Type 3, and it's written in uh, TypeScript and PHP. In future, for the training, we want to use TensorFlow, we want to use TensorFlow and we are still working on it. I can't say much about it at the moment. And yes, I have prepared a little video. I hope it's large enough. Maybe not. But I have it here too. So it's in type of read 12. And as I, as I said, we don't have this dialog option at the moment in the CK editor. So we uh, had a workflow in you are writing your text, then, then you mark it with, with your mouse and press the button. And after some seconds, some more seconds, the text is generated. At the moment, we are about uh, 30, 30 tokens per minute. So it's around 120 words per, uh, characters per minute. Per minute. And yes, with the generated text, you can still work in it. You can 
remove text, add text, you can do whatever you want with the text it's generated. And if you think, okay, something is missing, please, something is missing, please write more text. You can just use it again. You mark the text, you mark the new text, as it should do in this video soon. You can press the button again and the next text is generated in some seconds, I hope. Yes, it should be. Yeah. <laughs> so, and yes, that's it. In general, this is the co-writer extension at the moment and our model. So. And yes. That's for me. Thank you. That's the co-word extension. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? Okay. Ah, yes? Can you show the settings in the back end? Can you, some... Can you show the prompt settings in the back end? No, I just have a working knife thing at the moment. So, I'm sorry. Yes, another one. Okay, thank you. Yes. It's okay for you to use OpenAI as the model in the background. You can use it in area type of three, eleven or twelve at the moment. Yes. So thank you. Hi, I'm Andre. Um, I'm from the Autodudes, um, your companions who working on on automatization for annoying work every day. And we want to add um, yeah, AI power to type 3 as well. Uh, and we do other stuff like the co-writer does, but the co-writer, I have already used it. And yeah, I'm fi I find it great in version 11, this was. And um, we are have a plan to publish the AI suite for Type 3. So um, we are not limited to AI. There are um, topics or issues which doesn't make sense to do with AI. Translation, for example, because you cannot rely on it. So the AI suite. First of all, we saw tools like Durable or WordPress Elementor does have such features or Ionos does bring up features which generate a whole website for you. All the stuff, all the image, the des design, but I don't know really if the design is generated, but um, it generates the whole website. Did any one of you test it? Such a tool? No. Okay. Well, as a freelancer, I'm working for small business customers. And at this point, because, yes, you know how hard it is to get content from small business customers or, in general, content from customers, um, I had a question. Should I switch to such a tool? Or should I stay with Type 3? So, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about AI. So, the current models does calculate what you want to hear. They do not tell the truth about it. So, you need some expert who validates the result, texts, image, stuff like that. And currently, it does not 
generate something new. It has training da data and this training data could be refactored, but it cannot add new value to it. And it ca cannot know the deep insights about your customer's company or your company or yeah, your, your unique selling proposals, stuff like that. From where should it know? And so we need to add, to, to add, re, to add new value or to add a real value to your content on your page, you need humans. So I often see this quote on the internet. Someone here who knows this quote? I will, I will say, to replace programmers, designers, and agencies with robots, clients will have to accurately describe what they want. We are safe. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's, it's important to know when to use AI or the AI suite and when not to use. The second is really important. So you can use it to get fast started, get first ideas, get more ideas on something, um, reduce the boring stuff, um, and yeah, the AI suite is uh, first place for editors, agencies, and a little bit for developers, but I show you that later. And if you're generally not allowed to work with OpenAI, for example, or US tools because of compliance rules, well, yeah, you, you cannot use these tools if you have no own model on that. And the big thing I, I hope every one of you is aware of is if you use personal data, sensitive data, like medicine data or something like that, you have to really take care to not um, put that in, in such, a, such a tool because you don't know what it does with it. And also sensible data or, yeah, things like how to create an atomic bomb or, um, yeah, the, the Ukrainian war or something like that. Um, you should, you are not allowed to um, generate with it AI things. So, <clears throat> I want to show you our construct on the AI suite. First of all, we, we, we worked with OpenAI and after that we saw, yeah, okay, there are other models which does the job much better, like DALI. Well, DALI improved really good in the last time, but you mostly take Midjourney, for example, and we want to add more and more models on that so you can use multiple models Things like Deeple, Google Translate, all this stuff. So, but if I tell you, well, you can use the AI suite, but you have to collect 10 API keys, what do you say? You would say, no. This, I, I don't go and collect all those API keys, this is pain. So we, just, we, we thought about how can we achieve that, that it's really easy to use that. And so we we decided to have to have those um, those free client which you can download on on the extension repository or packages whatever, and this client will talk to our server, and you need only one API key with that, and our server will talk to multiple external services, and you have you do not have to take care about that. And, and then we thought, okay, so the services cost money, and this, yeah, and we have to ship the API key anyway, so we decided to have a little shop, and there you can have a little one th single API key, and with this one API key, you can use all the features we put inside that. So what is the benefit? Yeah, you get project faster done because you have to insert 
things like Lauren Ipsum. You can have more ideas. Um, you do not have to do the boring stuff. Um, you do not need to have uh, multiple API keys, as I said. And yeah, the thing is, you do not have to give your credit card of uh, data to a company outside the EU. So it's really easy to get started with that. Install the extension, get the API key, insert the API key, and go for that. So some of you will have the question, OK, for what do I pay then? So currently, you can, it's like a prepaid. You have a budget, you add that, you pay for that, and then you have requests. And you pay for requests, which is currently as cheap as possible because we want you to enable you, we want to enable you to use this extension and try it. And give us feedback what you are missing on that. So our key motivation is build smaller websites faster, get your own projects faster done, and we think with your feedback it could be more cool than it is actually. And finally, we want to push type 3 in the end, because, as I said, um, there are lots of other tools which can do that. A little um, roadmap, what you can expect from us in the near future. We want to publish that extension the next days, but we're fighting against German bureaucracy, actually. And yeah, the mid-journey should be added. This is f f yeah, nearly done. Then we want to add video generation, also with stable diffusion, SORA. And in the long run, we also think about providing an own model. So this is maybe um, data privacy better for some companies. So. Since I had last time um, a little time problem, <laughs> because um, requests take some time, I have prepared some screencast on it, where you can see the current features. So imagine a type of three backend, which with the AI suite, um, you can create page tree structure, for example, if you start um, with, a with a small customer, you maybe want to create a, a page tree structure in the, in the front, so you m can make a request, you can restructure it, you can add some own sites on it, and edit or, and all the things, and in the end you can create that structure, and you see in the left side the structure is here. You can create directly in the new content element wizard, text image, for example. You see um, the fields where you can choose, for example, background image or header image, all the stuff. You can disable that and do a request, and you get an, an answer with, with the header, with the, the text, with the image. You can choose the, the, the name of the file and add it to your content like that. If you have added content, you, yeah, you can have also this um, generate image button directly in the, the, the image tool. And if there is content on your page, you can generate SEO uh, titles or descriptions. Um, like you can see here, you directly can add that to the Twitter and open graph tags. So you do not have to copy that um, over there. Yeah, also the description. So, and you can see um, those stuff is, is, is there. Yeah, the, the, the image generation button directly um, on the image thing. Here, a little preview to see the mid journey test. Is, uh, it wasn't was there, but actually it's um, reverted. So, you can create. 
any image you want. And we have some first um, feature for developers. Um, maybe some of you a developer and translated a Xlib file. So we added here something which you can translate that really fast with, with a click, you can validate it, and um, you do not have to do that boring stuff as a developer. And yeah, that is what it's currently um, provide. And yeah, this is our website. And yeah, this is the AI suite and the current state of it. So this is um, my colleague and Manuel and me, and we are working on that AI thing. And if you want to get in touch with us, there's, oh, there's um, also a Slack channel with it's called AI Suite. When you can, you want to have maybe a demo account. We have a, a demo system where you can test it currently because it's not public yet, but we try to get it published in the next days. Um, maybe next week, if, if everything goes the right way. And yeah, that's it for the first thing. Are there any questions? Well, I think there is some time left, since Borders couldn't be here this, 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 um, today. Um, I can show you if you want some live demo. Are you interested? Okay. So, this is the, the, the AI Suite backend module where you can do n not a lot of things, but the things you actually do not have and you see how many requests you have and um, when you buy a, a API key you first get 15 requests for free so you can play around a bit and um, yeah so what we can do for example we want to create a page tree for example maybe for the webcam venlo or something like that for uh, the webcam venue for next year, maybe. So here we can choose on which page this, this, this structure should be start. And if we request that, we see this, this will be get generated. Take a moment. And this is one problem with, <laughs> with um, yeah, AI. You, you, sometimes you get not... Uh, 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 a, a, a good result, so you, maybe you have to create that one 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 time once more. So um, create page structure for webcam venlo in when yeah. I think this should work. Otherwise, I would take another example. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe this is the point. For uh, a for the website of a type three camp in Düsseldorf, maybe this will work. Maybe webcam Venlo was too specific on that. No, it it hates me. So and. Or a uh, soccer club. So, but this should work. Well, actually, it's not stored anyway. So, this is maybe a demo effect. So, I can tell you that, can show you then yet that you can add here things like a program and that and can. 
add something like uh, speaker. So I can speaker. And you can restructure that, so you can hide the buttons here. You can restructure it inside, outside. So you can build really fast a new structure for a website. And since I said I want to have that under the, the, uh, under the Startseite homepage in, in, in English, so I can add that here and you see that the new pages are there and um, also the slugs are generated automatically here for you. So when we come to this, uh, we can add some content. Uh, maybe we can have a text image, for example. Oh, the wrong button. The AI suite adds um, a tab here. And if you use this one, the, um, you will get all those um, features to add or to generate it with AI. So, for example, text and image. Then you will switch over to the AI suite. And then you can choose your model. Actually, it's OpenAI and DALI. I disabled the background image because two images would be take very long, actually. So, and we do not have that much time because I want to show you something more about a uh, website of a type of three camp, right about the topic um, program. So, so now I request that. You see, I had requested the header, the subheader, the text, and the image. Th these fields are um, automatically um, added because of the because of the TCA configuration. So, image has the configuration of an image, and so the AI suite detects. The, this field, and you can add an image there. So, and also for RTE um, or CK editor fields, it knows okay, the text um, should be in the field with the RTE or the CK editor field. So, we see there's a nice picture about type 3. We choose here any title, what we have. We can regenerate it, but I, I don't want to. I'm stretch the time here. So, and, and after that, I have everything here I need. And I can generate a, a second picture, like, um, what can I say? Programmers talking together. So, there you get the multi step wizard. And, um, after a while, you will get some image on that. So, okay, diversity is on. Nice. So, and then, yeah, you can add that. And as you see, can see, your image is here, and you can go, go on working, and yeah. So. We can yeah, do some some so yeah and and this you see it works so and what we what we also can do is um, to show that um, we can for example an accordion and um, I just try to make it a little bit faster. For website of uh, about the topic frequently asked questions.
So now it will take a little bit longer because we have we have an accordion item and that that accordion items uh, the accordion has items, so every item has to be generated. And as you can see, okay, I don't know if this is a good picture, so well, maybe it doesn't fit my needs, but I see the accordion items and I see, okay, it has, yeah, demo effect. Um, there's no useful content inside. So, so imagine there <laughs> is um, useful content, you can also, at that, and you have those frequently asked questions on that. So, yeah. So, so, also the page properties, as I, I said, you can generate that. This one needs some content on the page to 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 get the context. And yeah, if if there is no content, how should it yeah sum up the, what is inside the page? So, so. Yeah, type of three camp program also. So, and you see it's also there. You can generate images. Yeah. So, since I, I, I think you're more the developer guys, so I would, th I would show um, the development feature that this really works. Currently, Xlib files translation. You see something coming soon. Some ideas here. So you can add your your extension key here. In this case, it's the AI suite. I, I just prepared a, a, a file. It's called um, yeah, how it's called this one. So I, I take the name. I choose a language like German. So I, here I can say translate, translate only the new things which aren't translated yet or translate the whole file. Um, yeah, the file doesn't exist, so this would be the same actually. And if I say translate, so this went to Google Translate currently. We're working on a Deeple um, API. Also, on the, you, you can see the keys here and you see the translation and then you can edit, you can validate it. And if you said, okay, write to file system, you can see there's a new file, which has the content we created now. So this, and, and this automation stuff is what we add in additional work, despite AI things for your editors. Yeah, any questions? Give some more instruction to give your content. Yes. So, like, uh, as a user or as a helpful yeah. assistant. So, so you can configure that in, in code or in the installation itself. Or what do you, do? Um, you, you can add that. And this is the one thing. And the second thing we we working on is we want to provide some prompt templates where you can um, have. I don't know, something like a drop down, and you can say, okay, yes, I want to use this one or that one, or, but you can also work on maybe on your own pre configurations. This is a feature, what we is on our list, but actually we do that on our spare time, so um, yeah. And so it, yeah. We, we, we're moving forward, as you can see, there is something. And um, yeah, and, and the question to you is, would you use such a feature or do you think your customers would use such a feature? This is the question because it's a lot of work and we ask ourselves, is, it's, it's worth it, yeah. So, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> Some more questions? Okay, so if you have questions during the day, come to me, talk to me. Um, if you want to have uh, a, um, a demo account, login, come to me. Um, we get that done. Thank you very much. <laughs>